In this example, we're going to find equations of the tangent lines to the graph of f of x that are parallel to this given line. Okay, so parallel, first of all, means that they're going to have the same slope. So we need to go ahead and find the slope of this line so we can, you know, do the rest of the problem. So in order to find the slope, probably the best thing to do is to write this in slope uh, intercept form, and then we can just grab the slope right from the equation. So let's subtract 8x from both sides. So negative 2y equals negative 8x minus 13. And when I divide everything by the negative 2, it looks like y equals 4x plus 13 halves. Now, of course, I don't really care about the 13 halves, but I do care about this 4. So the slope equals 4. And that's the big thing that I need to start with. So if it's parallel to a line that has a slope of 4, that means all of my tangent lines are going to have a slope of 4. So I need to go ahead and take the derivative of my function and set that equal to 4 to find all the x values where that actually takes place. So let's go ahead and work the derivative of this function. And my function is x minus 2 over x plus 2. So it looks like I need to use the quotient rule. So it's low times the derivative of the numerator, so 1, minus high, so it's the numerator, times the derivative of the denominator. And that, of course, is all over the square of the denominator. So let's take a moment and kind of uh, work this out a little bit. So x plus 2 minus x plus 2 all over this quantity x plus 2 squared which now simplifies all the way down to 4 over x plus 2 squared. All right, so I have an expression here that will give me the slope for any value of x. I know that that needs to be 4. So we can put it 4 over 1. So I need this 4 over the quantity x plus 2 squared to be 4 over 1. So we could, if you wanted to, do cross products real quick, and uh, you're just going to see that these 4s are just going to end up canceling out when I divide everything by 4 anyway. So 1 equals x plus 2 quantity squared, which really was just the denominators here anyway. All right, well, I can do a quick square root of both sides, and when I do that, I'll have plus or minus 1 on the left side, and an x plus 2 on the right side. So I'll have two values, so when I subtract 2 from both sides, it'll be a positive 1 minus 2, and a negative 1 minus 2. So my values of x will be, well, it looks like negative 1 and negative 3. So what this tells me is the, uh, the tangent lines have this point of intersection or this point of tangency, and the x-coordinates for those points are negative 1 and negative 3. So let's go back to what we're trying to do. We're trying to write the equations of these tangent lines. So to write tangent line equations, we need a point and a slope. Well, we have our slope from before. The slope was 4. And our points are going to be, well, we have the x-coordinate for each of our points, but we don't yet have the y-coordinate. So let's go ahead and find that. So I'm going to find f of negative 1 and f of negative 3. So it's these two x values that I just found. And the reason I'm going to do that is to find the associated y-coordinate that goes with this ordered pair. So our function was x minus 2 over x plus 2. So this is going to be a negative 1 minus 2 over a negative 1 plus 2. So negative 3 over 1 equals negative 3. So this ordered pair is negative 1, negative 3 for the first one. And the second one will be negative 3 minus 2 over negative 3 plus 2. So negative 5 over negative 1 makes positive 5. So that second ordered pair is negative 3, 5. All right, well, two separate ordered pairs, so two points of tangency here that we need, and the slope 
was 4. So I need two different lines. So let's go ahead and write each one of these lines in point-slope form. So y minus the y coordinate equals the slope times the quantity x minus the x coordinate. So y plus 3 equals 4 times x plus 1, and that's for this ordered pair. And the second one, y minus 5 equals 4x plus 3. And these will be the two lines that are tangent to our original function and parallel to this line. And let's go ahead and look at the graph of that.